Hey guys, Cam here from PocketLint.com and iOS 11 is coming. And for those brave enough to try the beta versions, it is already here. As is usual, the main interface of the software remains the same, but there have been a lot of functional and aesthetic changes for you to look forward to and that you can try for yourself now if you sign up for the public beta. It's worth reiterating though, this is beta software I'm showing you. It will probably change and improve in between now and the official launch a little later this year. The first major visual change is probably Control Center. Now when you swipe this up from the bottom of your iPhone screen, the new interface takes over the entire display. It's not just a small pop-up window anymore. By default, it's the usual collection of controls here, but you can add more by heading into the Settings app. You can add elements like the Screen Recorder, Apple Remote, Alarms and Shortcuts to Notes and Apple Wallet. Apple Remote is particularly useful for Apple TV users and means you now no longer need to launch the separate app to control your TV. Using Control Center brings up a small remote interface up on the screen when you press it. Now what's really cool is that you can force press a lot of these Control Center buttons to bring up its own dedicated full-size control. The second change is Messages. Now iOS 11 builds on the revamped messaging app launched last year with iOS 10. Think of the new version as iOS 10 messages, but slightly better. Sadly, two of the most exciting features aren't ready yet, and those are Apple Pay and true message syncing between devices. However, we do have two new screen effects to keep us happy for now, and you can swipe across on your conversations to reveal a new hide alerts option for stopping notifications coming through. iMessage apps are also easier to get through and live in the scroll bar at the bottom of the screen. Now the third most obvious change is redesigned apps. The App Store has been given a new huge user interface revamp, which now has a dedicated today view showing off the day's best apps and various other highlights, including profiles of your favorite developers. This new design language with the bold text at the top kind of permeates through the entire user interface. You'll find it in Siri, Messages, Mail, the Music app, and a few other standard iPhone apps. The next change is the quick type keyboard, and like iOS 11 on the iPad, the keyboard's been given a new lease of life on the iPhone too. But for the iPhone, the biggest change is one-handed typing, which is great if you have one of the plus-sized phones. Press and hold the emoji key and then select one-handed typing. Boom, easy as that. Now there's also a new live photos and camera features. Now with live photos, you can now create three different effects. There's loop and bounce, which do what you expect them to do, but there's also a long exposure one which basically uses the live photo to create a single blurred image. Now the camera has some more filters and it compresses the images more efficiently so they take up less space as well. Of course there are other bits to look forward to like the improved functionality of Siri and there's the lock screen which now gives you access to all of your notifications and not just the unread ones. You can swipe up to see all the ones you haven't cleared. There's Do Not Disturb that kicks in automatically when you're driving and indoor mapping coming to maps so that you can navigate big shopping malls. Our time with it has generally been issue free so far. We've had the odd app not working, but that's expected with a beta software. If you want to try the beta for yourself, there's a link in the description box below to an article showing you how to sign up. I've been Cam, I'm at CamBunton on Twitter, and I'll see you again soon.